Hi there, welcome to Captain General again. Let's do a book review now. Um, Peter Frankopan, uh, The Silk Road, A New History uh, of the World. Uh, I'm reading that at the moment. It's a very good book. You should definitely buy it and uh, read it or listen to it, as I am. Um, and it's fascinating. He's talking about the East um, and how that provides a better way to understand the history of the world. Um, rather than what we're taught um, at school, which is sort of, you know, I suppose the Mycenaeans, the Greeks, the Bronze Age, and then starts the Iron Age, and then you've got, you know, classical Greece and Athens, you've got Rome, uh, and of course the Etruscans, although he doesn't really talk about the Etruscans much, um, and that sort of modern Western view of, of the world. Now... It is an interesting point. Where does West meet East in the past and how has it been affected? And in one of my other podcasts, I talk about the Etruscans um, who set up Rome. They were the Romans, basically. They, they just rebranded one of their towns as Rome and called it uh, Rome and said that everyone there were Romans, even though they were Etruscan. Um, they were from uh, Asia Minor, from Anatolia. So, yeah. It's um, they, there's a lot of Eastern influence there, and um, there's some interesting books you can read on that, the Etruscans. Um, so I suspect um, where Peter talks about the Persian Empire, you know, of Cyrus, uh, 500 BC and moving forward, I mean, that's interesting, very interesting, but I think you have to go back another thousand years to start seeing the source of the... Um, of the uh, of modernity in the modernizing world. I, I don't believe we live in the modern world yet. We live in a modernizing world. We have some modernity, but not nearly enough. So look, that is an issue. Uh, but he brings up, uh, you know, some good points, which is the Persian Empire, how many transactions are done there, the thriving cultures, so on and so forth. And he's right about that. I mean, it depends how you want to calculate this or assess this. If you go on the basis of thriving cultures and transactions, the East was doing plenty well. There's no doubt about that. Um, no doubt at all. But I think the Bronze Age into Iron Age cultures of Western Europe, as it became, um, with aqueducts and proper drainage systems and whatever else, did lead to much more... Um, um, uh, active civilizations that have continued into the current day um, over the centuries and I think um, uh, the eastern um, eastern areas of course have been sort of um, affected by communism and the uh, former Soviet Union and their states so on and so forth and it's it's not been um, it's not been as easy um, for them um, uh, will they have their day? Definitely. Um, and arguably they're, they're, they're starting to begin their renaissance, which is good. And things go in cycles, uh, ebbs and flows, as they did for Christian Europe. And in fact, a lot of uh, Western culture was preserved by the Muslim world. God bless them for doing that. Um, during the Dark Ages. So there's no doubt that civilization sort of ebb and flow. Um, as to whether we should understand world history through the East, well, I mean, in many ways we should, because what I'm saying is sort of, I'm talking about Western Europe in many ways, um, whereas Peter's talking about the whole world. But um, I, I think you do need to understand um, uh, things like where um, classical Greece came from, where classical Rome came from, their Bronze Age um, ancestors and how powerful they were and, and that led to their success. You need to understand the mistakes that the Romans made in the Republic um, and then the um, Empire. I think that's very important. Um, and in terms of um, understanding the modern world, well, look... 
a lot of what's happened over the last thousand years uh, globally has had a lot to do with um, William the Conqueror um, and um, the Dukes of Normandy, um, which included some of my family as some of his um, trusty lieutenants, um, sort of enforcing their will um, or enforcing their, um, their, their rights, you might say, under the will to take over the U the, well, what became the UK and run systems of government their way. All the way from Henry II, who I talk about quite a bit from about 1150 um, AD or BCE, right through to Edward I and Simon de Montfort and um, Edward's father, Henry III. Um, in about a hundred years, you get modernity coming then, including parliaments and whatever else. And that that has been that that part of history, ten sixty six to about twelve sixty six, um, has been um, defining for us. We still live in that world, and most of our world is comes from that. That's just the reality. Um, so, a very good book. I'm still reading it. Uh, but the reality is that I think there's a distinct weighting towards Western Europe in the way world history has gone, um, not just because of uh, Bronze Age Greece and Bronze Age uh, uh, Italy, if you like, um, but the significant um, turmoil of the 200 years from the mid-11th century to the mid-13th century in um, UK, what is now the UK and France, um, and how it's led to most of our laws and parliaments and diplomacy and um, everything else. Anyway, please let me know what you think. Um, like, share and comment and do read the book, Peter Frankopan's book, uh, Silk Road, A New History of the World. Thanks. <laughs>